All right, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of Backyard DIY. I'm, of course, Zachary. So we are going to be working on my go-kart again. On this video, even though the cart is running, I'm going to be showing you how to do a valve adjustment. In the last video, I showed you replacing the head and kind of skipped over showing you how to adjust and set the valves. So I'm going to show you that now and uh, I'll put a link so that way these videos are kind of tied together and um, also if you're having a million of other problems, weak power or losing compression, there's a lot of scenarios that um, could mean that your valves need to be adjusted and <clears throat> unfortunately a lot of the scenarios that would tell you that your valves need to be adjusted could have other problems as well so I'm not going to get into those um, if you want to leave a comment below and if you have any questions the general rule of what I'm going to be showing you how to adjust valves is going to be the same for any um, engine small engine specifically with valves um, so overhead valves type engines or anything like that or um, dual overhead if you've got a bigger engine anyways uh, the principle is going to be the same so um, specs and numbers and stuff are probably going to be the only thing that are going to change so on this one we're going to get started and the socket to get started is going to be an 8 millimeter. So we're going to get started on here. We're going to remove the cover first. So here's the first video. What we're going to be doing is removing this here cover because um, we have to get access to the flywheel so we can roll over the um, crankshaft manually and, and advance the timing. So that's going to be an 8 millimeter. I'm not going to remove all the panels like I did last time um, for ease of the video just because um, if you need to remove those panels or you're having a hard time seeing on this video you can just go to the other video but there's there's just four eight millimeter bolts on this cover all right so next you're going to want to remove the spark plug which is right there uh, that will just make it easier to crank over the engine and then also the off chance of actually firing. Um, for example, you left the key switch on or something like that. I can't imagine you could spin it manually with your hand fast enough to crank it over, but I guess that would just be a added security. You don't have to worry about uh, the chance of it firing on accident. Um, and then also the biggest thing is, is it makes it easier to crank the engine over um, by hand. So that one is going to be a 5 8 to remove that spark plug. Alright, and there's a spark plug. It's fairly new because you'll see in my other video I just replaced the head and this and it had a new one with it. Um, so this has only got probably an hour, maybe two of ride time on that spark plug. Now, obviously, because the spark plug hole is exposed, you want to be very careful around it to not get anything to fall in there while you're working. Um, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of cover the general area and not actually go in the hole but this casing allows me to 
plug the area without going into the actual hole. All right, now next we're going to switch back to our eight millimeter socket. And that will take the valve cover bolts out, which are back here, kind of already shown, but. All right, all four bolts are out. Spark plug wire out of the way. And lift this cover off. Valve cover's got a rubber O-ring gasket on it. So, Make sure you keep that there and <laughs> you don't lose it, I guess. All right, let me see here. All right, so it's gonna mess with your mind a little bit because it's kind of backwards looking at it from where I'm actually gonna be working at, but that's the uh, best view. I can get for you. So all you need to do is grab your flywheel that we exposed to earlier here on the side where my hand's at and stop dog. Go away. Stop. You need to be in the video again. Hey. Here's my little puppy. Alright, so he's my little garage helper. So what you're gonna need is the 9mm and you want to clockwise rotation the flywheel. Uh, pull this out a little bit, make sure it doesn't get sucked into the spark plug hole. And all you need to do is go until you see this top valve at its lowest point or at its resting point I would say so as I crank this over uh, eventually so it's pushing down now I don't know if you can pick that up in the video yeah you can it looks like it so you want to now go until the exhaust is pushing down which would mean that this intake is going to be at its highest point it will go to. So, keep going here. Alright, and then there's the exhaust is at its highest point or at its most compressed point so this should be free okay so I'm going to adjust this now and uh, I will show you when I adjust the exhaust, what I mean by at its lowest point, um, this one is going to be at its highest point. So you can't hear it, but it's got a uh, wiggle to it. Hey, I'm going to take the camera off the stand here. Let's see if I can get a better angle.
Okay, there we go. So, it's not even showing it. But anyway, there's a little bit of wiggle in it. That's what we want. And then, at the same time, we want the exhaust valve pushed in as far as it'll go. So we want that to be as tight as possible. So on this one here, now that we are adjusted, or we're, we're at the correct point, I should say. So what you do is you take your um, 9 millimeter and you break this loose by counterclockwise, it's just a standard twist. And you want to get your number 4, um, or I'm sorry, not number 4, your 4 thousandths feeler gauge. Point zero zero four. Mm, there we go. Point zero zero four. And then this is what your feeler gauge is going to look like. Like I said, uh, nothing special here. Any part store, AutoZone, Napa, all those will have it. But you want to push this between your valve stem at the end here and the um, timing cam timing cam yeah we're just gonna call it a wish I'm gonna call it can't think of the name so you want this four to feel kinda like a magnet in there shouldn't be too tight shouldn't be too loose And it is too tight. So I'm glad I took this apart. It's not that big of a deal, but I'm not going to stop it from running, but might as well have it right if you know how to do it yourself. Shop would charge you an insane amount to do this. So there we go, we got that magnetic feeling and it's hard to describe that, I can't describe that to you. Something that you just gotta learn. And what you do is after that jam nut's loose, you're twisting this little screw in and out to get the tightness that you want. Because generally your gap will get bigger, so I wanted to go with my smaller gap to start. So. It's not quite tight enough yet. Tighten that. Tighten it a little more. It's too much. I can't pull it out. I go out a little bit. And that's where my magnetic feeling is. Now you have to do it a couple times because. Or check it several times because as you tighten that jam nut, you can tighten your the other nut. Or if you wanted to, you could grab a socket that's small enough to grab hold on to that or a wrench that's small enough to hold on to that or a pair of pliers or something to hold the screw still while you tighten the jam nut so go a little bit tighter Like where that feels, it's a little tiny bit loose, but I'm feeling when I, I'm thinking when I tighten this jam nut, it's going to tighten up a little bit.
So, and it did. So, get that tight. Still got the magnetic feeling that I want. It's not too hard, it's not too loose. So that one's perfect. Snug it up again. And uh, since this was running before, like I said, I'm going to skip doing the exhaust. And we'll just show you the all the way down point on the intake so you could just copy that on the exhaust so you just keep spinning your flywheel clockwise and as you see it's starting to go down which is going to be the intake stroke so it's going down going down going down and it's starting to come back up so I go backwards just a little bit And then I advance back till I feel like I'm at the farthest point down, right there. And then that's where I would check the exhaust. And uh, that's how we adjust that. I'm going to probably leave the camera right here and slap it all back together. And we're going to fire it up and hear how it sounds. Cases all back on and mounted, and we are ready to start it up. Ha, you're right. What about the spark plug? Yes, we need a spark plug. And then because I got this project cart, because the guy stripped the head out, my suggestion to you would either be to A, get the torque, the exact torque of that spark plug, and get it, use a torque wrench and get it in there and make sure you don't strip it out, or B, um, be extremely careful stripping it out or tightening it up and if you think you went too far you probably went way past too far they're extremely sensitive especially with the aluminum heads so we got everything back together kind of a recap here we got the uh, flywheel cover flywheel cover back on, got the spark plug back in, spark plug boot, all four bolts on the uh, valve cover are tightened. Everything is all good to go. We should be able to crank it up and see what happens. And it's cold, so this is, I've noticed this engine is a little finicky sometimes, so. Not this time. Just give it a little throttle. So
So, again, this is Zachary with Backyard DIY. As you can tell, the go kart is still running, sounding good. And uh, we, together, you and me, and me, and you, and you, and you, that one over there, and that one, we all got it going good. So, your machine's going to be running just as smoothly. Give it a little bit more gas. All right, so that sounds amazing to me. So, a couple things you can do if you want to check the RPMs of a, a small engine, this is what I consider small engine, um, is uh, you can have a tack that reads the voltage off of the spark plug. Um, they make specific tools for that. Or the cheapest option I have is a sorometer, and it's kind of a dying skill I would say because a lot of people are switching to the digital versions of it and uh, if you guys want a video on how to use a sorometer it's the cheapest I mean almost can make one in your backyard but uh, it's a little bit more precise than that but they're really cheap anyways uh, so if you want a video on how to, how to make one of those or how to use one of those we can make a video of that I hope this video helped you I hope uh, you can use this and like I said this is for a wide variety of small engine equipment that uses valves um, all the way from my riding lawnmower that's a I believe 1819 horse to 150 cc I don't know what that converts to in horsepower but um, that works and then uh, um, a snowblower that's a little five horse motor so they will all use the same techniques to adjust the valves uh, with a overhead valve um, especially with the uh, timing chain so it'll be really close to that exact same thing <clears throat> on how you adjust it so that's our overcap or overview um, I'm gonna do a couple more videos here on working on this cart I have a couple more videos coming up if you have any videos that you would like me to make uh, especially small engine wise um, I would love to do it. This is actually my hobby and I enjoy doing it. So that's why I'm making videos for you guys. Um, if you like this video, it's helpful, whatever, uh, leave comments down below and I read my comments and I will reply to them as soon as I can. I got like a bad shadow going on here. I gotta get some better lighting. There we go. Now you can see my other eye. <clears throat> so, and one corner above and one side will say the next probable video for you to watch and the other side will be a subscribe button. Please hit the subscribe button and then when you go to my name, my page's name, there will be a little bell. Make sure you click on the bell with the little parentheses around it and it will give you a notification every time I post a video. Right now I'm posting videos every Wednesday. I'm trying to post videos every Wednesday at uh, 5 p.m. If there is a better time on Wednesday or a better day you think I should post videos, feel free to leave that below. I will take your comments and uh, we'll roll with it. We'll change it and uh, until someone else has a different opinion or maybe we can have a war and have 20 people, ooh, ooh, 20 people say what time they want it, what day they want it. Anyway, I can, uh, I can uh, arrange it to work around that. So, thanks for watching with the long, crazy outro, and uh, this is Zachary with Backyard DIY. See ya.